do you know what's really nice to see in Wayland Land? Requested a merge a year ago. Now, technically, it's going on two years because of the way that GitLab does timestamps, but it's actually been merged. This doesn't say three years, doesn't say five years, just a year. Which, you know, for a lot of projects, might be quite a bit of time. Now, technically, it's, again, going on two years, but even so. A lot of Wayland protocol discussions, as I've discussed plenty of times on this channel, do tend to get dragged out really far. And it makes sense, because you're dealing with people who have very different projects, all trying to agree on very, in many cases, complicated approaches to a problem. And you're going to have disagreements, you're going to have arguments, and things tend to take a while. But in recent years, things have been going quite a bit smoother, and we're seeing a lot more protocols actually get merged in a reasonable length of time. So as you can see from that title, today we are talking about the top level tag protocol recently merged into the upstream Wayland project. The top level tag protocol allows clients to set a tag for top levels, which the compositor can use to identify them even after the application has been restarted. This persistent identification can be used by the compositor to restore properties like position, size, always on top, and can also be used for allowing users to create rules that change compositor behavior for specific windows. Top level in this context, I really don't like the way that Wayland does some of the terminology. It is kind of needlessly confusing. It basically just means windows. So one thing you might notice on Wayland, and the rule is going to be a bit different depending on which specific compositor you're using. When I open a window, let's say I have a terminal. I put my cursor in the top left hand corner. Window opens in the center. Okay, fine. But if I go and move it here, and then I close the window, back in the center, no matter what I do with it, back in the center. And that is fine for a lot of things. Like if I'm just opening a new terminal, hey, if it's in the center of the screen, that's fine. But if you're dealing with an application that has multiple independent windows, them all appearing on top of each other, that just makes the application considerably less easy to use. And people like to have things restored back to where they were before when they reopen a new window. This is a basic behavior across everything else you use. Now, you may remember a similar sounding idea I've discussed before, the XDG session management protocol. This one is still sitting open. In this case, though, it's more about restoration after a crash. So if your entire compositor crashes, remembering which windows you had open, what was in those windows, things like that. Whereas this is more about restoring the properties of the last instance of the window. So they're very related goals, but have slight nuances to them. Both of these things are things you do want to see. Number 18, that session management protocol, kind of tries to do similar things, but this is a separate protocol because for window rules, we want an ID that is not tied to a specific instance of an application. So you can say, this is the main window of every instance of GIMP, for example, or something like that, where you can target all of those specific kinds of windows. Removing the requirement for client to store keys and prevent collisions makes it much easier for clients to support the protocol. All the client has to do is set a single hard-coded string per top level, basically giving each of the windows some sort of way to identify it, some sort of name for the window, which is something they were already doing through other systems, especially on the X11 side. At least for me personally, it is pretty awkward to deal with the second instance having completely separate properties, which happens with session management protocol. If you open a second file browser instance, I would expect it to have the same size and position similar to the first instance and not to the last time that I used a second instance. Session restoration is a more specific use case, which is different from normal operation of a desktop system. Session restoration is used when something goes wrong, but remembering the position you last had a window in, 
this is something you are frequently going to use through regular operation. Basically, this is a protocol for reapplying properties to a certain class of windows, whether the compositor is doing it by itself or something is exposed to the user to allow some form of scripting of this system. And like I was saying before about the protocol being merged in a reasonable length of time, part of me does miss the hell threads of old. And there are still some that exist, but they are far, far less common. This one went pretty smoothly, with the first thing being this. This protocol was discussed in one of the Wayland meetings, and adding the rough consensus that was reached for visibility, please correct me if I'm misremembering. The general consensus was that the window ID extension does not really conflict with the session management extension, which is intended to be used to save and restore things like positions, but instead is useful for scripting or what WMCTL plus window titles was used for in the X11 world i.e. allowing the user to be in control of how certain selected windows behave. My intention is still to use this to save and restore things like positions in Kwin as well, but exclusively as a fallback for clients that don't support or use the session management protocol. For clients that do use the session management protocol, the only purpose of this protocol is to identify windows in user-defined rules or scripts so it doesn't conflict in any way. Now you know this is a chill protocol discussion when the greatest level of criticism early on is the use of a term. Not on the functionality of the protocol or the usefulness of the protocol, but whether the identifier should be referred to as ID. <laughs> this got changed to top level tag, which you know, is how we kind of got the name we have here. Top level was a standard term used in Wayland discourse and tag. Well, it's a tag for the top level. So it makes sense, even though top level from an outsider perspective doesn't really make any sense as a term. From there, things were pretty smooth sailing. There was a bit of a delay when no progress was actually being made, but nothing that crazy being done, documentation changes, things like that, nothing, nothing to really write home about. There was a mutter implementation made at this point here, and that got the attention of Matthias Klassen from the GNOME project, with some, again, pretty tame criticisms and questions. And this person who made the mutter implementation had the answers. How is the tag getting onto the surface? It would be set by application developers if they have multi-windows. Do we expect apps to show a UI for letting users set tags on windows? As the tag has to be set before the window is mapped, I would say no. It is a static string that is set to identify the window, nothing more. How is this better than matching on an app ID? The app ID is not enough on multi-window use cases. It can be combined with the window tag to create a unique identifier per app slash window. But my understanding is the uniqueness isn't really desired here, but rather grouping into classes that can be treated in a scripted way. For my taste, this is much too open-ended without a clear use case. It will enable the same kinds of hacks that were done a generation ago with WM class. Now the idea isn't necessarily uniqueness or not uniqueness. It is to enable what you're referring to as these hacks that were done a generation ago with WM class. Right now, users want these kinds of hacks. You can refer to them as hacks as much as you want, but it doesn't change the usefulness that is provided by this functionality. And if there is a better approach to being able to control the position of a window that isn't regarded as a hack, well, propose it. Yeah, but, at this stage, this is the approach that's being provided for that problem. This discussion was further fleshed out under the GTK implementation. What is the goal of identifying the windows, putting them on specific outputs, I assume? Wouldn't a place surface on output protocol serve this use case much better? Specific output slash position ensuring a specific window will be displayed above others. Basically, we have multiple surfaces that we want to statically set where they will be displayed. We want the configurability bits to be handled by the compositor, not the apps, nor an external process 
like what this is doing. So this is a very popular set of extensions used for in-vehicle infotainment systems where Wayland is supposedly so amazing and so great. These extensions exist because not being out of position windows where you want to position them is not viable. Yeah, it's just not viable. You need to be able to do that. For such a long time, there's been this meme in the Wayland world that it's so great for these infotainment systems, and yes, it is. But at the same time, they need to make use of extensions because a lot of the upstream development of Wayland is based around this theoretical utopian system that doesn't actually exist in the real world. It has gotten a lot better, don't get me wrong, but I would say up until about... 2021? 2022? There was just a lot of basic things which weren't even being considered as things a user would want to do. And now there is this sort of attempt to address these problems through a number of additional new protocols. Anyway, somebody's interested in having this kind of protocol. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been proposed. That, yeah, logically makes sense. That's why there is the proposal from Xavier Hugel here. It is another member of the family of Bring Back X11 protocols. This one is the WM class was cool actually one. I personally am happy to get away from all the hacks that were enabled by WM class and similar things, which is why I'm pushing back here. I agree, it is pretty much the same thing. I don't want Wayland to become X11 neither, but the current state embedded in automotive especially is much worse than on the desktop. I will wait and see how the session management protocol shapes up and see if we can manually write the on disk configuration file and let the compositor restore it as if it was a previous session. I don't think that is necessary really. You could just use the protocol to provide the window IDs you're after. We already have hacks to make it work for demo purposes, but I'm trying to come up with a streamlined way to suggest an alternative of what is currently achieved with the IVI extensions mentioned above. Unfortunately, they are widely used in automotive nowadays, so I would suggest to wait and see how both protocols evolve before taking any future steps. And with that, he came to understand like, okay, sure, that's fine. Basically, there are problems that exist in Wayland, and you can say, we don't want that in Wayland, we don't want to replicate the X11 behavior, and that's fine. You can have that position, but the industry isn't going to agree with your position. If they had something, you take it away and don't offer a replacement, well, it's open source. They're going to add that back, and they're going to do it anyway, whether you like it or not. Industry is not like the desktop. They aren't just going to say, oh, well, we just don't have this functionality anymore. That's cool. No, like, they, they, they have a job to do. And if they need it to be there to make something work, it's going to be there. Now, over in the world of WL Roots, they were the first one to give an act to this. And it does play nicely with the Sway window rules. But shortly after, there was a... Let's say big, because there's not really anything else that's big in this entire thread. Blocker for the protocol. And that is, first, I think, use a visible string that must not be translated is a blocker for this. So that is one of the requirements for the identifier shown for the different windows. I think we should require any Wayland protocol to easily support presenting information in the user's language. This could be as simple as making set top level tag take both a tag and a description. And of course, Neil Gomper is here because he's Neil Gomper. You know the shtick. I think all of this might be much more out of scope than people are making it out to be. The tag is set by the application itself, and if the application chooses to make the identifier match the language of the system, that's up to them. To be honest, we cannot know what the base language of the application is going to be. It can be Japanese, and if someone is using a Japanese input, it's quite natural to type that. So if it's translated or not, I don't think it matters. Well, we can at least set expectations, that's what a protocol is. 
As it stands, the tag is expected to be user visible, at least in some circumstances, so we should set the expectation that it is translated. If that makes sense, it would make just as much sense for application authors to generate a UUID at development time for each of their window types. We obviously can't mandate translations if the client author is using meaningful names, but I think we should make it clear we expect them. So the tag is basically like a... It, well, it's an identifier. It's like a variable in a programming language language, it's used to indicate that you're trying to interact with a certain thing. And I guess you could say, well, we expect that to be translated, but then you run into this situation where, let's say I write a script to control some windows, and then I give that script to someone who has the system set to German. Well, if the window tags are now translated, that's not going to work. You have to modify the script to be a German script, or a Japanese script, or any other language out there that might be supported by the application. And then different applications might do different levels of translations. Some of them not bothering to translate some of the tags or all of them, or maybe they translate one of them. Being in a situation where the identifier for applications can break scripts depending on the system's locale, I don't think is a good idea. But after some back and forth, it was agreed that a translatable description is fine. So if you want to have, say, a main window being the identifier, and then a description in German, English, in any other language you want to support, I don't know why those are the first two come to mind, um, you can have a separate description that indicates what the window is. Following this shortly after, we got an ACK from the GNOME project, along with an ACK from Mia, which is actually where this person who had the criticism of the thing not being translated was from. Now, remember how there was that complaint about the term ID being used? Well, someone else had a different complaint about the word tag being used, as tag is used in things like River and DWL on the X11 side, things like DWM, as a sort of... It kind of means workspace, but it's a workspace where you can have a window being on multiple at once. You can say, this is on tag three and four, and use it as a way to sort of filter what is being shown on each location, but it can be in multiple at once. However, these concerns were dismissed as they are not heavily used within the Wayland ecosystem. Yes, they are used within River and DWL, but these are small niche compositors it's not part of the core Wayland terminology. It's not something used across tons of different projects. So it wasn't really treated as a major concern. And shortly after that, we saw a merger, along with a merger quest opened up over in WL Roots for XDG top level tag, which Simon Sir already agreed on. And there's literally no comments here because if Simon Sir agrees to it, uh, it's going to happen in WL Roots because that's pretty much how WL Roots works. So as always, I am very happy to see Wayland protocols being merged, problems being addressed. And yes, it's going to take a while for this to be supported in various different applications. But we have to start somewhere. Problems have to be addressed, issues have to be resolved, use cases have to be thought of, and I'm glad we're finally getting somewhere. Hopefully, of the Wayland Protocol discussion videos, this was on a more positive side than especially some of the older ones have been. But let me know your thoughts down below. So, if you like the video, go like the video. If you I'm not redoing that. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and it's a Wayland.